We're Alive, a story of survival. Chapter 29, Beyond Our Walls, Part 2 of 3. Written by Casey Wayland. You really need to read the fine print. I mean, it's just a standard set of orders. I can see that. Well, what's the holdup? You gonna sign or what? And if I don't? AWOL, on top of other things. Let's just say it's not something you want to do. So I don't have a choice? Not really. Well, there's no choice like no choice. Huh. Good, now we can get started. Have a seat. You too, Puck. I'm not sure how much of this you've been made aware of. Should I take notes or something? Well, that's not necessary. We have it all filed, and now you'll be in charge of that information. Paper pushers. Yay. Uh, we got a lot to cover, so just bear with me. Now, there's been a great deal of time and energy spent establishing a decent range of communication and compiling as much information as we could find. Now, this map shows us here at Fort Irwin and all the current locations of our personnel. They're scattered all over. Exactly. But every unit has a purpose. Now, some are doing rescue missions. Others are running special ops, which I'll get to. Now, Fort Irwin acts as our operational headquarters for all active military personnel and anyone who is training to be one. Now, we keep very few civilians on post. So where are they? Well, they've all been moved. Here, Boulder, Colorado. Current population, 150,000. No shit? 150,000? That's our failsafe. Mostly civilian. But we cycle a good-sized military presence to keep things secure. When refugees come here, we relocate them there. That's where most of our newbies come from. So civilians come back? Right. I mean, we have occasional flights to bring in new recruits to train. Now, this place acts as both a forward operating base and boot camp to help augment our numbers. Now, most of the training happens out in the box and the small town of Yermo to our south, which is utilized for practical exercises. The box, that's the large area to the north? Yeah, that's where most of the units train when, uh, when they get cycled through. Well, I've been there before, I just didn't hear it called that. So how many soldiers are located here? We have approximately 200 trainees out in the box right now and about 2,000 soldiers still on post. We had more here initially, but we shuffled them up to Boulder to protect the main body. And how many are in the field? I think by last count, 182. We rotate rescue and recon missions out for the more highly skilled soldiers, crossing branch lines. We have members here from all services, Marine, Navy, and even Coast Guard. Coast Guard? They had the first rescue missions? Exactly. The Coasties pulled their shit together faster than most, and got a good number of people out of California. Not all of them made it back. So you can imagine my surprise when one of their transport choppers ended up here a few months later. Any idea what happened to the crew? They landed at LAX and got overrun. Yeah, that's what we figured when we looked at the chopper. I didn't want that team returning to LA, but they were overambitious like many other units. Overambitious? What does that mean? It's the reason we're losing this war. There's too much hesitation when the enemy's your neighbor or friend. The other commands took the position not to use lethal force until they had to. They were hoping for a cure, something to change. One by one, we lost contact with other bases. In the time since everything started, we, here at Irwin, have been gathering up any pieces of personnel or munitions left behind. However, we keep finding fewer and fewer survivors, the last of which was from Arizona. We sent them up to Boulder just a few days before you arrived. You okay, Sergeant? Yeah, uh, it's just a lot at once. You want me to continue? Go on. I'm fine. What else is there? Okay, moving on to the bigger picture. Boulder and Irwin are the only safe zones left in the continental U.S. Uh, that we know about, anyway. We lost contact with everyone on the East Coast about a week after the West was hit. Wait, so they had time to prepare? Well, not much, and it didn't matter. It multiplied and spread across the country in about a day and a half. 
Now we know of a few hot spots along the coastline where we think it might have started. One's in LA, one in San Diego, and we think two up in the Bay Area, as well as Oregon and Seattle. And that's not all. The last thing we heard before everything went silent was that there was a hot spot in Japan, possibly China and the Philippines, and that it was spreading rather quickly. I didn't know about that last part. Well, we keep that on a need to know, okay? That's as much information as we got before everyone else went quiet. Yeah, well, add Hawaii to that list. You can confirm it started there, too? Yes. I'll need you to document everything you know so that we can try and fill in the timeline. Well, do you know anything more about it? How it started? No, we don't. Just focusing now on how to stop it. Look, I'm sure you'll get more bits of information as you work here. But that's where we stand. We still have Boulder in this place. As far as I'm concerned, that's enough. So, what are we doing now? Is there a plan? I'm guessing no different than yours has been. Continue to grow and count on enough force multipliers to take back areas that we operate out of. And maintain what we have secure. Keep it real simple. Um, am I allowed to tell my friends about this? What I can, anyway? If they're done with their exams, they most likely already know. Carl was supposed to tell them. But I'm glad you brought that up. Because now we have to deal with them. What do you mean? The only civilian personnel we keep on this post are medical. And only because we don't have enough soldiers to augment their numbers. But that'll be changing soon. They've got a great facility in Boulder, where new medics are Wait. being trained. So what you're saying is that they... Are gonna be shipped out. No! My... These people... Listen, we've been through hell. They can hold their own. I'm counting on it. They don't have to go anywhere, but that means they enlist, and train like everyone else. And that's the only option? That's it. No exceptions. Well, if they won't, I could go with them? No. I need your experience and training here. Sir, there must be some other way. Sergeant, we are at war. And as long as you wear that uniform, you are part of that conflict. Everyone makes sacrifices. And we will do what we have to. Your friends, whomever chooses to go, I assure you they'll be safe. I want to go talk to them. Fine. But there's a plane leaving from the box tomorrow morning. Whoever goes will be on it. Not if I talk with them first. Good. I headed to the barracks as quickly as I could. So many things were racing through my head. What Kimmet told me was crazy, but at the same time it made perfect sense. I understood why things were happening the way they did, but I didn't want them to. Everything was just changing so fast. Guys. Michael, what's wrong? You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I just... Riley? Yeah, they let me out this morning. The doctor cleared her. I'm sorry about what happened, Michael. I'm... It's all right, but wait. He's here. Carl's been filling us in. On everything. And? And what? We're going to Boulder tomorrow. He didn't tell you the other options? I did. So you understand, you can stay here and train. Why would we want to do that? Like any of us are soldiers. You've all been for as long as I can remember. Yeah, and it sucked. Why would we want to keep on doing that? We only did it because we had to. I'm definitely not qualified. Carl was talking about all the jobs they have up there. We'd still be fighting, just in different ways. Growing food or whatever they need. We can really help. Why do you want to stay here? I don't have a choice. Michael. You've done enough already. You don't have to be the guy that saves everyone. No, no, you don't understand. I have no choice. They're making me stay. They changed my orders. What? I'm not going anywhere. Well, can't you change it? It doesn't look like it. So what are you going to do? There's nothing I can do. Wait, so that means... That means you either stay and train, or you go on without me. It's not fair. Hey, don't look at me. I don't make the rules. It's not my fault. I signed up in Boulder and came here. It's really nice up there, but they need people to fight. Boulder or soldier? Really? Would staying here be so bad? Riley, tough as nails and a hell of a shot with a bow? And the military needs cooks. Datu, I'm sure they'd, 
They'd love to have more mechanics. Pegs can fly. Kelly is Kelly. She's great. Hope, where is she? The doctors are still looking at her. And she's blind and too young to stay here anyway. Michael, I don't think you're being realistic. They won't let Danya out. So I have to go with Hope. We can't send her alone. And Michael, you didn't hear the best part. The surgeons up there might be able to help Hope and her eyes. They aren't sure, but it's worth a try. I'm tired of fighting day after day. I've lost enough people in my life. We all have, but that doesn't mean- Even if I can fly, I'd still have to be a soldier. You would have to go through the basic training with everyone else. Guns and all. That's not helping. She asked earlier. Michael, would you stay if you didn't have to? I don't have that option, so why answer that? I'll stay with you, Michael. You will? I'm tired of running. And the rest of you are going? What about Tanya? If she clears, the same option. She'll have to wait for the next plane, though. When do you have to know by? Plane leaves at 1100 tomorrow morning. Pickup's at 9, so by then. You done packing? I don't have a lot to take. What about the stuff that was in the helicopter? Yeah, we took out what was ours. Then you're all set. I can't stay, Michael. You can. You just don't want to. You're right. I don't. I don't want to be a soldier. I don't want to be forced to do things I'm not comfortable with. That's not me. But I also don't want to leave you. Well, which is it? Which is more important to you? It's not that simple. Yes, it is. Just yesterday, you were pushing me away. Asking for a little space and never seeing you again are two very different things. If you can make it through the last couple of months, you can get through a little training. Hell, you were one of the only ones with the guts to go with me south. The first to volunteer. That's because you needed someone. You think I won't need you here? You won't. Not like before. You have other trained soldiers now. You could be one of them. Do you really believe that? Yes. Well, I don't. I could do a lot of good up there. I know plants, and they'll need people for that. And we'd be safe up there. You'd be safe down here too. You don't know that. Michael. Michael. I want you to stay. It may not make sense, but I want you to stay. You'll get used to it. It? What's it? The guns? The violence? Just do it enough until I get numb? No! You've done it before. Only because I had to. Well, you have to now. No! No, I don't! And if I can't stay, then why don't you just come with us? They won't let me. There's always a choice. Tell them you quit. It's not that simple. And you want me to join them? To be stuck like you? Forever being told what to do and when to do it? This m might as well be the colony. You signed up for this, not me. Well, do you think up there will be any different? Yes, I do. What, like they won't force you to pick up a gun with all those things out there? And I will if I have to. Why don't you understand? There's a difference. Bottom line, I won't let myself be forced into this. 
Then you don't want to be here with me. Then I don't. Then you don't want to be with me. Then I don't. The bus came by right on time. Riley and I helped them load everything onto the plane amongst the Hummer and the cargo already on board. It didn't take long as our group had little to begin with, but it gave us an excuse to see him off. Hope's on board with the dog. Everything else is in the pallet. All right. So that just leaves us? Oh, damn it. Come here. Look after them, okay? I... Okay. Come here, Michael. Oh. Thank you for everything. Yeah, well, try not to be too much of a bitch to them when you get up there. <laughs> <laughs> Take care of Tiny. I'll make sure she's on the next flight up. Bye, Riley. Bye, Flower Girl. Michael? It's okay, Dato. You can hug me. Oh. oh, okay. Hey, okay. Yeah. Maybe maybe not so tight. Too bad. <laughs> okay. Go, go. Get on the plane. Here. Take this. Your journal? So you have it. I'll start a new one. You don't have to do that anymore. Y yes. Yes, I do. The rest of you, get up there. They're ready. Pegs. Yeah? Take care. You too. Come on, you're wasting their fuel, go! I'm moving. Bye. Bye. Double time, go! All right, you two, staying, right? Get on the bus. This sucks. Come on, Michael. And just like that, they were gone. She was gone. And I was the idiot who let her go. So what now? We keep going. You go to training soon, and I, uh... I don't know what I do now. You think we'll ever see them again? I don't know. Yeah, hold on a sec. I gotta get my yippee set. Yeah, what's up? Yeah, yeah, they're with me. Why? Oh, fuck. Alright, yeah, we're on our way. What? What is it? It's your friend, Tanya. She flipping out again? No, worse. She's been bit. Join us again Monday for the next episode of We're Alive. And now, a word from our sponsors. Starring Jim Gleason, Nate Gies, Elisa Elliott, Claire Doden, Jay Oligario, Otto Sturk, Constance Parn, Brett Newton, Scott Marvin, Jenna McCombie, Tammy Klein, Alan Azoulay, Christian Vieira, Blair Byhauer, Shirley Jordan, and Jane Lehach. I'm Michael Swan. We're alive.
was written and directed by K.C. Whalen. Produced by Grayson Stone, line producer Simon Nepper, zombie intern Eric Wargo. Music intro by Brother Dan. Series artist Ben Hosack. To find out more and for a full list of cast and crew, please visit our website at we'realive.com. Be sure to follow us on Twitter and Facebook for all production-related updates and future projects. Thank you for listening to this Audio Theater for the Mind by Wayland Productions. <laughs>